Hey everyone, it's cold this morning. I say that everyone's all but it's winter, it's February, and it's cold. I was gonna do a lot of filming outside early because that's when you get the best lighting. But uh, no, I'm in and I've got my heater going. So yeah, warming up here a little bit. Let's get this right. Sun's coming in. Well, today I'm going to talk about a subject that I've talked about a few times already. But I'm going to talk about it again because the subject came up again in a very profound way. So I want to talk about it. It's exercise as a nomad. How do we get exercise? Why do we need to make sure that we get enough exercise? And how can we do it safely if we're not used to exercising? So let's get started on this subject. Yeah. So first of all, I want to mention that I'm not a physician. I'm not a licensed physical therapist or a trainer. So I have to put out a bit of a disclaimer that don't follow any of these instructions without a doctor's okay yeah how many of us really do that i don't know but i'm going to put that out there okay and listen to your own body but with that i'm going to also say that there are times where we do put limits on ourselves up here so Follow your instincts, but sometimes we're so used to doing things a certain way that we do think, well, I can't do this or I can't do that. Maybe you can do it if you kind of put yourself out there just a little bit, expand a little bit. But I do have to say, get a doctor's excuse. <laughs> Whether you do or not, I don't know, but I'm not a physical therapist. So let's get started with talking about exercise and how we can get it. Nomads and travelers live in tiny homes. Are we getting enough exercise? Maybe, maybe not. I've noticed out here boondocking that if you live in a larger rig, it's almost like a, sort of a traveling home. You have your couch, you have your chair, you have your bed. In a minivan, I don't have that. But I have noticed that people in larger rings, I don't see them out very much. They seem to be in their little comfort zone inside their little little traveling condos. I don't watch them all the time, but I do notice that. I think it's more common to see people that are in minivans or SUVs and uh, build out vans to be outside more because it's so small in here. I have to get outside. I have to go out there and get my exercise. Now, the gyms are available if you want to drive into the city. A lot of nomads do enjoy boondocking, and they mostly are out boondocking, whether it's uh, winter or summer. And then there's people like me that like to live inside a city, and they love those gyms. I used to be that way. Yes, I joined Planet Fitness, and I enjoyed my showers, my massage chairs, the exercise equipment and then I could go into the stretching area and get my yoga done well now we have to wear the mask and um you might enjoy doing that but with a mask but I don't I need more oxygen I don't want my oxygen constricted and they do somewhat constrict our oxygen so I think oxygen is a very important part of the human life <laughs> yes I do so I don't want to exercise and be getting aerobics, things like that, if I'm going to have my uh, breathing constricted. So I have totally cut off all gyms, and I have learned how to maneuver using non-traditional equipment to get all of my exercise. So why do we need exercise? Well, we're adults, and we're pretty smart, <laughs> but I will, these are all reminders for you. Uh, to prevent injury, if we don't exercise regularly, when we do trip or, you know, we're trying to reach for something, we could cause injury if we're not stretched out and we don't have proper exercise on a regular basis. It increases circulation. Our circulatory system works better. And with that, we feel better every day, every minute of the day. Exercise is good for um, our mental wellness. We feel better. So we're gonna be happier, we're gonna be more positive. Another thing, too, is physical attractiveness. If we want to attract that guy or that gal out there, no matter what age, hello, <laughs> we want to look good. 
Yeah. And we, we are, um, we are visual creatures. So yeah. it will increase our confidence and it will increase our lifespan. And it's going to make us more agile for the nomad life. If we're going to be outside, we better be a little agile because there's rocks out there. There's sticks. <laughs> there's wood, things like that. And even if we're in parks and we're in the city and we go to parks during the day, I mean, it's, uh, there are things out there. There's curbs that we have to step down or step up on. So we want to stay agile for our nomad life. And even in here, if we're stretching to reach something, we want to be agile. We don't want to pull out our elbow or our shoulder. And shoulders, uh, shoulders very important. Anytime that I ask an older person, uh, do you have any pain anywhere? Would you, any injury that you have to look out for? And nine times out of 10, it's it, yeah, my shoulders. So the shoulders. As I mentioned, as nomads, we're outside a lot. Now, even if you don't go for long walks, and which I do highly recommend, and we'll talk about that. If you go for long walks and brisk walks, or slow walks, whatever, whatever kind of walk that you enjoy, you're at least going to walk out to the campfire at night. So, and I hope that's not the only time you ever walk or walking around, maybe your big class A, you're walking from the bedroom to the kitchen to get a snack, um, or walking to the couch so you can sit down. <laughs> um, you're going to at least walk outside and maybe, um, getting, uh, your rig ready to move, uh, to go to another area, or you're going out to the campfire with all your friends and you're going to sit around. There's rocks out there if you're out boondocking. There's rocks, even <laughs> if you're in an RV park. And then there could be a twig, there could be a piece of wood, there could be a rock. And if you step on that wrong, you can twist your ankle. Well, if you exercise regularly, Sure, that ankle might go a little bit this way, but guess what? It's not going to sprain. But if you're not agile enough and you twist it even a little bit, you can sprain your ankle. And guess what? You're going to be uh, down for the count for a few weeks. Now, what type of exercise is best? Well, like I said, I'm not a doctor, but I have had a lifetime of exercise. I have always enjoyed exercise. I like to stay active. Well, stretching is number one for me. I think it's very important to stay stretched out. That way, if your ankle and you're walking and your ankle isn't stretched out and you twist it a little bit, oh, yeah, those tendons and the ligaments and possibly the bone is going to twist and maybe break or sprain. Now, when we stretch or even when we do aerobics, we have muscle around our bones. The muscle is really what protects the bones. And the ten ligaments and the tendons is what help those bones move back and forth. Our elbows, yeah, our wrist, our fingers. So if we don't have muscle built up around to protect our bones, they can break. If our ligaments and tendons aren't stretched out that hold everything that makes for the movement, they're going to sprain and it's going to, it could possibly even rip, which is going to take a long time to heal. So stretching is very important. I used to do what I would consider doing yoga since I was 18. I first learned about it and I thought, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Well, over the years, I've tweaked yoga. I don't really call it yoga anymore. I've kind of tweaked it so much that I call it my stretching routine. There are some things that I found in traditional um, hatha yoga, which is your stretching. And um, it's not really in a meditation form, but it's a stretching. I have found that some of them, when I brought my it would hurt my shoulder. So I've really tweaked a lot of my stretching. The next exercise that I find very important is weights, weight bearing exercises. Now, I bought a couple of five pound, the hand weights, the dumbbells, the pink. I got them at Walmart. They were like $6 a piece. And I figured for 10, five and five, 10, um, that's not too bad. And I'll gain some, um, I'll gain many benefits from it. But there's other ways that you can do 
the actual weights other than just having those traditional dumbbells. What I've found, <laughs> I know, what I've found, some people watch me and they go, wow, what are you doing? I move rocks. I'm out boondocking, so I am. I move rocks. I pick up a couple of, I pick up a rock and a rock, and I will carry it. And sometimes I make little borders, or I'll make another really nice uh, little campfire uh, pit. And I care, and when I'm walking with them, I go like this. So I'm actually doing something. I'm getting my walking and my aerobic, which is next. Your aerobics, uh, walking, dancing, cycling, things like that. So when I <laughs> When I move rocks, like being on the chain gang, moving rocks, when I move rocks, I'm actually getting two exercises in at once because it is very aerobic. And I'm going like this as I'm walking. Or if it's a bigger rock and I need both hands, I will carry it. It's, it's getting both my uh, biceps are being tightened up. Yes. And then there's a couple exercises that I will show you. Um, I like to get you know, come on, gals. <laughs> come on. Yeah, I still got a little bit. I got to work on this. Um, the triceps. And we gather so much fat under here because as gals, we don't have the, the same upper body strength as, as a male. And it's a hormone thing. So we tend, if we're not using our upper body, we it, this kind of accumulates down here. <laughs> I know I'm showing my... Uh, well, you know, eh. Prides out the window. I don't care. But it's very important. And I'll show you what I do for that. I lean down. I open up my side door. And you can do it anyway. You can do it on a chair or whatever. But I bring myself up and I do um, for the triceps. Now, you can do the weights, bring a weight up and go up. But I don't like that. I feel like I don't have as much control over it. And it can sometimes go like this and I could pull something. So I don't like to use my weights for that. It's getting warm in here now. I'm going to turn off my... There we go. Whew. Okay. Okay, it's nice and warm in here now. Yeah, I was outside before I started. And boy, my hands are freezing. Okay. And then the next exercise that I am going to include, and I'm not a physical therapist, but other a real physical therapist might say, eh, you know, what, what's that uh, category? I'm going to call it balance. And many of you know that I use my slack line. And I enjoyed the slack line. When I first saw it in Reno, I thought, I've never seen some people doing this before. Hooking two uh, lines to trees <laughs> and then walking on it. Um, it's called the slack line. It's like different than tight rope. This is slack line. The rope, a tight rope walker, it's really like a cable and it's tightly uh, wrapped cable. So it really doesn't slack. So, um, and it's really not called a line. It would be more of a tight rope. Well, the slack line is the same thing, only different. It's slack and it's a line. Um, it's like a uh, cordage that's real. It's a, they're like lines and it, you use a ratchet um, to tighten it up where, however you want it tight. Well, anyways, so I bought a slack line and I bought one with a training line because I don't want to fall. <laughs> so I figured I'm going to get the same benefit I don't need to be the circus act and, and walk without, you know. So I bought one with the training line, and the link is in my uh, video description for a slack line. And I paid about, with tax, I think it was like $70,000. It's 59 plus tax. And when I'm in the city, oh, yeah, I do the slack line. I just find a couple of trees that are the right uh, length from each other, distance, and I hook them up and I do the slack line. And I have a lot of people come up and go, what is that? Can I try it? And I let them try it. So the slack line is for balance, but you can do it without a slack line. Balance is so important to keep our balance. So many uh, seniors, and there's, you know what? I've seen a lot of 20-year-olds that are in horrible shape. And they don't have good balance at all. So it's not just a senior thing where we need to have balance. So what you can do is you can just practice standing on one foot. 
and do it for a while. See how long you can do it and go back and forth. That's an easy exercise to do. And you can actually do it if you have a class A or a sprinter or something that you can stand up in your ring. You can do that. So, yeah, balance. I'm going to include balance. Very important in your exercise regime. So how do I stretch out? If I'm in a minivan, how am I stretching? And if I'm uh, out boondocking, it's rocky out here and it's dirt on the ground. Well, what I have discovered is my self-inflating sleeping pad that I wasn't using anyways, but I kept it because it was very expensive and it, and it folds up, it, it rolls up um, pretty easy and I keep it back in my uh, back area, my closet. Well, I decided, wow, I am going to put a tarp down and I am going to get that out. Wow, what a game changer. So I've got that out. And you could actually buy like a raft, a blow up raft, and maybe don't blow it up all the way, but um, blow it up a little bit so it cushions your body if you're out boondocking. Now, if you're in the city, just go out in the grass, go to a park and put out your blanket and stretch. Do not worry about what other people think of you. Once you do it a couple times, you're not going to care. The main thing is that you're going to be getting your exercise. And people are not going to be worried about what you're doing. In life, humans worry about what they're doing. They're more concerned about how they look, not how you look. So if you think, oh, they think I look stupid, they're actually thinking about themselves like, you know, do I look, do I look fat today or whatever? Or do, does this outfit look good on me? I hope I, you know, people are more worried about themselves in here as a rule than people, than people think that they're looking at them. So yeah, just do it. Don't worry about what other people think. You'll get over it. You really will. I don't care what I dance out in public now in a park or whatever. I don't care what people like looking. I, I believe in true that they're looking at me saying, wow, that's kind of cool. So, now I talked about the weights, use the weights, use rocks, use anything, even if it's small, like uh, a couple cans of soup or, or whatever, just do it. But it's important to keep these muscles. Now, I don't know the exact stats on it, but I will say that it is now, it's textbook. As once you reach a certain age, that studies have found that so much percentage of your muscle mass decreases. You know, that's not good. You got to keep it up. You got to exercise. When you keep it up, you will have less injury. Because like I mentioned before, if you twist, if your ankle twists, you can either just, your ankle can twist and it doesn't matter because you're stretched out or you can sprain it or you can even snap it. And as we get older, if we lose our muscle mass, well, guess what? I mean, that's why people break bones so easy as seniors. They've lost the muscle, which is protecting our bones. Now walking. Oh yeah. Walking is great. I am a walker. If you've been watching my channel, I walk. I try to get 10,000 steps in a day. I have an app on all my phones. It's just called pedometer. I mean, it's just a basic, it shows a little guy walking and it will record my steps. What it goes on with your phone is the, this action. It goes toot toot as you're walking. And if your phone is doing that, it takes it as a step. I suppose you could just stand there and hold your phone. I've actually tried that to see if it would work. It does if you do it right. But if it doesn't, if it suspects that you're doing this, it, it doesn't record them. So I guess that's why they call it a smartphone. Yeah. Um, but you can walk slow or you can walk brisk. It's up to you. You can walk in the morning. You can walk at night. Don't walk if it's in the summer. Don't walk in the heat of the day. Mm -mm. But, uh, you know, put a hat on. One thing I want to mention about walking. Let's just get this out there. Your shoes matter. If you're out walking, no matter what, you want to wear shoes that have good traction on the bottom, just like your, your rig tires. You want to have a tread on them. There's one pair of shoes that I have that seem like they're so wonderful for outdoors. They look outdoorsy. We all wear them. I love them, but um, they don't have the same traction on the bottom of them. And I've actually slipped on them before. And I, you know, I have good balance. So if I can slip on them, anybody can slip on them. 
uh, I don't recommend them for out walking, especially out boondocking. And um, I mean, even in some areas in the park um, that you, they can slip, they, they, they slip. Looks like they have tread, but they don't. They're really more smooth. So I like to wear either a good tennis shoe with good tread or my hiking boots with good tread. So very important to wear good shoes. You can actually break up your walking. You don't have to do it all at once. You know, 10,000 steps is a good hour and a few minutes. So I break it up. I go in the morning just to get everything moving along, get my circulatory system going. And then I kind of walk throughout the day. And especially before the sun goes down now that it's getting a little bit warmer. Yeah, I like to walk at night too before bed. So you can break it up. Um, not only the walking, but the dancing, you can dance and you can also ride bike. Uh, there's all kinds of aerobics. You, you know what you like. We're, we're, you're all pretty smart. I'm not this expert thinking that I'm talking to a kindergartner. You all know what exercise is. You know what works for you. Now, if you're just starting out, please go slow. I just have to mention that. Go slow, follow your instincts, but Step out of your comfort zone a little bit at first. Um, back on the stretching, I wanted to mention when you're stretching, if you haven't stretched for a long time, one thing is when you're stretching, don't stretch your neck back. It's not good for your neck back. Keep it forward. Um, when you're stretching, follow your instincts and follow your body. Pain is never good. And with stretching, I want to mention a reality with stretching after, even after a couple days of stretching, even if it's just minor stretching, just to get you started, if you're not stretched out, you're going to find in a couple days, wow, I can really stretch out more. It doesn't take your body long to get used to it. So just keep going and don't get discouraged. Now, as far as balance goes, I mentioned the slack line and I mentioned just standing on one foot uh, here and there, but what you can also do, what I do, if you have any dancing background, and some of you do, you've mentioned, oh yeah, I can recognize some of your dance steps, Lee, because they they name they name them, uh, toe ball, uh, tap dancing, things like that. So if you are older now and you have dance in your background, if you've had ballet, what about doing just standing and doing your leg lifts? Don't hang on to anything, or you can hang on beside your van. And you can hang on to the handle. I mean, just like a ballet bar, you're going to hang on. Do some leg lifts. Do some ballet um, stances and stretching. But what I like to do is just out there and not hang on to anything. Just put my arms out and do some uh, leg lifts up, sideways, and then back. And then switch. So I'm working really both legs. One leg is holding me up and tightening. And the other one is getting stretched out and getting the exercise. So I just want to mention that for you dancers who've had ballet in your background. A lot of you have. You just haven't done it in a long time. Maybe um, get started with that again. Now, yeah, up here. I talk about this a lot. And I firmly believe that the mind should control the body. Captain, soldier. This decides and this gives commands on what it wants this to do. So positive thoughts are so important. You need to think positively in your life. One thing is never put yourself down. You know, we have that little soft talk, that little voice in there. We have our soft talk and we're talking to ourselves often throughout the day, all day long. We talk to ourselves. Never. If you catch yourself doing a negative talk to yourself, completely switch it over. Catch yourself. Listen to what you're talking about and, and the messages you're giving yourself. For example, a little self-talk is like, oh, you know, uh, you're going to eat this today and you're going to be put on weight tomorrow. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. You're telling your body to turn that into fat. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but I do believe that. I believe that you can self-talk your body into utilizing whatever and turn it into nutrition. 
But I think with thinking more positive, you're going to want to eat healthier foods. But don't just assume because you eat something unhealthy that, oh, you're going to put on a pound from eating that. Don't do that because you're telling your body to do that. So when it comes to exercise, you need to be have positive talk to yourself. Tell yourself, I love to exercise. This feels like something I want to do. I exercise every day. I am following a really good, healthy um, regime in my life. So when you tell yourself those things, the body will respond. It will start craving those things. Say out loud what you want and write it down. What do you want? Say to yourself, I am 100% healthy. Guess what? Your body will start responding. If we can take a placebo pill in drug studies and those who were taking the placebo instead of the real drug and they became healthy by believing that they were taking a drug that was going to improve or heal them. Well, come on. It's all up here, isn't it? Yeah. I want you to visualize what you want to be. Visualize who you want to be. As they say in life, uh, decide who you want to be, what you want to do, and go be that person. I mean, just go do it. Everything that we see or create happened twice. First, it happened up here. Then it became an actual physical activity, and we created it. But things happen twice. The van that I'm sitting on, or sitting in, I'm not sitting on my van, I'm sitting in my minivan. This happened twice. It was created in somebody's mind up here. Then they manufactured it, and people physically built this. Everything happens twice. It happens up here first. So visualize yourself exercising. Visualize yourself what you want to look like. This will respond. And I have mentioned that I believe the emotions happen in our body. We carry our emotions in our body. But our mind is where our thoughts come in. This controls. This controls our body. Don't let the emotions and don't let this control this. This is the captain and this is the little surf. It does what this tells it to do. So yeah, visualize, lay down and visualize what you want to be. And that doesn't go for exercise. That goes for, I want to be more caring. I want to be more loving towards other people. Um, I want to do this better. I want to do that better. In sports psychology, when an athlete injures themselves, they go into what a sports psychology, um, a actual professor tells them to do. This is all textbook. It's all been proven and uh, studies have been made. And they will, their sports psychologist will train them and help them to train up here. And they've done, they put, um, uh, I forget what they're called, but they put them on their body so that they can um, read out how the muscles are doing. And they have found that the muscle mass is working, even though they're only visualizing themselves doing it, they're meditating on it, so that they can heal their body if there was an injury and not be totally um, unable to do it again and have to go into training again to build that back up. They're ready to go when the injury is healed. They can go right back into their physical, whatever their sport is. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's textbook. That's been proven and the studies have been done on that. So, okay, enough of that. Here's a bit of a summary um, of really healthy things to do if you're going to start exercising or if you are exercising, these are only reminders. And I've got a little list here. So Drink lots of water. <laughs> the body needs water, especially if you're out walking. Summer's coming, and it's already in Arizona. It's getting warmer in the afternoon, getting up to 80. So drink lots of water. What I do is in the morning, it's become a habit. Um, I have a daily routine. In the morning, I drink 32 ounces of water. 
and this is 32 ounces. I drink this. This is a lot of water. Um, what I've been doing, because it's cold in the morning, I've been getting out my stove and kind of warming it up a little bit. This isn't warm. What, I, what I'm doing is bringing it down to lukewarm because cold, I don't like to drink cold water on my throat. It's, it, it bothers me. I'm not much of an ice person, but I warm it up. So I will make sure that I drink all of this water. What it does is it kickstart, well, it gets my water, gets a lot of water for the day, just in case I kind of slack off. It gets that water, but it also kickstart your liver. Your, during, the, during the night, you've processed a lot of things. And there's a lot of chemicals in our food and elements in our environment. What it does is it kickstart your liver. And it when that water will help right off the bat and will push out and get through your system and it's going to come through your bowels uh, you know you're going to poop it out i'm sorry but you're going to poop this out you don't want to excrete out toxins how else are you going to get them out it's through your kidneys and through your liver so i mean this is a big organ we can excrete toxins out of our skin Ooh, that would be that would not be a good look if all them toxins start coming out of your skin, which it will end up doing if you don't get it out through your urine or your poop. <laughs> your poop. Oh, it's a poop. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you don't get it out that way, it'll come out some way or it'll just keep making you sick, which means that you will start developing disease, which is dis-ease. You want to be in ease, not dis-ease. And it, uh, that's, uh, yeah, a lot of toxins coming out of your skin. Ooh, that would be a very bad look. Yeah. So you want to drink water. And first thing in the morning, you want to do it. Just make yourself do it. Write it down and make yourself do it. Okay. Go slower. Take your time. You don't want to injure yourself. When you're exercising, this is just a little tip. Go slow and take your time. Hey, a lot of us are retired. We got time. Just take your time. Um, don't exercise on a full stomach. I mean, yeah, that uh, it, being on a full stomach will drag your energy down. So self-explanatory, um, and get good rest every night. And so don't eat right before you go to sleep. Your body's going to be digesting a lot of food. Yeah. You don't, you want it to get rest, not digest. Ooh, that's like a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And be positive about yourself. Watch that self-talk. Um, notice what you say to yourself. If it is a negative self-talk, just, um, I mean, just train yourself to do it. Take the time to say, oh no, and just switch it. Like, oh, I'm tired today. No, don't say that. You know, just, oh, no. Say, I am, I have lots of energy today. You're going to be, it sounds so silly, but you're going to be surprised how, uh, yeah, it, it, it can turn itself around and it's like, yeah, your body goes, oh, okay. Um, we have energy. Remember on the Titanic? <laughs> Remember on the Titanic where um, at the top was the captain of the ship? <laughs> I just thought of this. The top, I remember when we watched the Titanic, he's, and he's got that little thing and he's talking to it way back. And then the line goes down to the to the basement where they got the 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 heater um the fern the furnace going where it's making those the um the the ship go okay I don't know terminology so bear with me here well it goes okay <laughs> remember down there he goes full speed full speed up there the captain he's going okay and he listen goes okay everybody full speed and they start putting in in more coal okay okay. Well, so you get the idea. So the captain told them what to do. Well, tell your body what to do. Full speed, <laughs> put more fuel in, you know. So get going. Um, and if you if you say things like that, like, oh, I feel so tired today. So no, I feel so energetic today. I have great energy. Um, I, oh, I feel kind of grumpy today. No, no, no. Say, so I am so happy today. Just say it. Just say it or write it on a paper. You can turn these things around and you can switch it. Switch it. Okay, what else? Um, and walking. Walking is so great. Come on. Walking, I've read that walking is left, left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain. Everything gets balanced. If you ever 
feel confused or you're worried about something, go for a walk. No. <laughs> okay. If, if you're older, remember my three sons. Hi. Welcome to our show. What was his name? Steve? The, the dad's name was Steve. I forget their last name. It won't, it'll come to me later. Remember whenever he felt, <laughs> I always remember that, whenever he felt um, he had to think about something or something was going on, he always went for a walk. Remember Charlie, the, <laughs> he was the guy that, I think it was the uncle, that took care of him? He goes, yes, yeah, she's out for a walk. If you remember his last name, um, let me know. My three sons, yeah. yeah didn't he actually, oh, Ernie, I think his name, he came later. Yeah. Oh, well, Who's, who was Ernie? Was he a cousin or what? Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to do a little reminder for everybody that exercise is important and it's easy to do. Whether you're a city dweller or uh, you're boondocking all the time, that you can't just sit in your rig and you can't just, the only walking you do it might be to go out to the campfire at night, you know, things like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, just a little reminder. Um, my reminder is, uh, please subscribe. It really does help me out. Thank you for watching it all the way through. Give me a thumbs up. And in the description are the links to all things Amazon. If you go through my link, it doesn't cost you anything. And you go through, it's like going through my door. You go through my link. Even if you don't buy the item, Amazon, and you order it within 24 hours of putting it in your cart, Amazon will reward me with a little bit of a commission and it doesn't cost you a thing. So thank you guys. Um, I hope you have a really great day and remember to go slow on if you're starting out with your exercise program. So love you. Bye.